Should I buy this property as a company or in my own name? It's the first question you should ask yourself when investing. But unfortunately, lots of people leave it too late and end up writing into our column panicking because they've just received a huge tax bill that's turned what they thought was a profitable business into a money-sucking machine. And the worst part is, once you've bought a property the wrong way, there's not much you can do to fix it. So in this video, I'll show you the pros and cons of buying in your own name versus through a company, a real-life example of how the numbers work and how extreme the difference can be. And I'll also share a simple rule to help you make the right choice for your specific situation. However, it's very important that you understand everyone's financial situation is different. What's right for one investor might be completely wrong for another. So this video will give you a clear understanding of your options, but ultimately you will need to work with an accountant to make the right choice for your specific circumstances. So with that in mind, let's break down exactly what you need to know. The first pro to investing via a company is always an eye-opener because up until recently it didn't exist so many people are totally clueless about it and unfortunately this can have expensive consequences to bring this to life let's compare company karen and private Pete. let's say they both own five properties and they make a hundred thousand pounds a year in rental income typically you're going to have twenty thousand pounds in costs like repairs and letting agent fees and thirty thousand pounds in mortgage interest costs now up until 2020 both karen and pete could deduct all of these costs in other words the taxable profit would be fifty thousand pounds regardless of how they bought the property however by 2020 the conservative government had finished making a change to tax law but only for individuals meaning that Pete can no longer deduct that £30,000 mortgage cost, which means he's officially making a profit of £80,000 and paying tax based on that £80,000, even though he's only got £50,000 in his pocket. Now, there is a relief that means this doesn't end up affecting basic rate taxpayers too much, but most property investors are not basic rate taxpayers. And unfortunately, I have seen a lot of people not factor this into their calculation and end up with a property that after tax is costing them more than it's making. But before you get carried away and set up a company straight away, I suggest you wait and see what happens to Karen a bit later, because it's not all as rosy as you might think. However, there is another big advantage to buying through a company. And if you get this calculation wrong, it can actually make an even bigger difference to your tax bill than number one. So as you know, in the UK, there are different tax buckets for different situations. If you earn a salary, you have the basic rate of 20%, a higher rate of 40%, and the additional rate for 45%. But UK companies have their own bucket where all profits are taxed at between 19% and 25%. So this doesn't apply to everybody, but most of the clients we work with are cash-rich, time-poor investors who own a business or are already in the 40 or 45% personal tax bracket. So let's say for argument's sake that someone's earning £150,000 a year from their salary and they end up making £5,000 a month or £60,000 a year in profit from their properties. This profit all gets poured straight into the 45% tax bucket. Whereas if they set up a company, the corporation tax would be between 19 and 25%, which again can be the difference between an unprofitable time suck or a thriving business that gives you profits to reinvest. And speaking of reinvesting, there's one more advantage that is particularly powerful if you run your own business. Many of our clients have built up profits in their existing companies. So if they decided to invest that money into property personally, they'd first need to withdraw the money from the company and pay tax on that withdrawal. So even before you start investing, you're going to get a huge tax bill. However, if you set up a separate property company, then you can move money into it without triggering personal tax charges. This means that more of your hard-earned business profits can go straight into building your property portfolio rather than filling those massive tax buckets. Hold up, at this point you might be thinking, no brainer, why would anyone buy a property in their personal name? And it's a fair question. Those tax benefits are significant. But there are some advantages of buying in your own name that many people overlook. So people talk about setting up a company like it's a walk in the park. And yes, the setup is really easy. But running a company means dealing with additional paperwork, managing a separate business entity, filing annual accounts. You know what? It can be a pain in the backside. So although a company might provide a tax wrapper around your property, it does come with extra responsibilities, which depending on your personal circumstances might might not be worth the hassle. And that's the first advantage of buying individually. It's simple. And the second advantage ties into this exact same point, but it's often overlooked. When you buy in your own name, your life admin stays exactly the same. You 
just end up paying more to the tax man. But when you set up a company, dealing with company accounts, corporation tax returns, and potentially even payroll if you decide to take a salary or hire anyone, it all has a cost. And you need to pay an accountant to manage this stuff for you, which might more than wipe out the tax advantage if you've only got a small portfolio. However, there's one difference that has in the past been a deciding factor that has made individual ownership more attractive, and that is access to mortgage deals. In the past, company mortgages were significantly more expensive, and there was far less choice because lots of lenders didn't want to deal with company purchases. They just didn't want the extra hassle themselves. This meant that if you could find a personal mortgage at, say, 5%, a company mortgage might be sitting at around 6%, which made a huge difference, particularly if you had multiple properties. But this advantage has been gradually disappearing over the last few years. As more and more investors switch to company ownership, lenders are adapting. They're following the money. And the gap between personal and company mortgage rates is getting smaller every year, which raises an important question. If the mortgage advantage is disappearing and the main difference comes down to simplicity versus tax efficiency, how do you decide which route is right for you? Well, there's one more factor we need to consider and it's probably the biggest drawback of company ownership. So let's go back to company Karen from the beginning. We saw that she was making £50,000 a year in profit from her properties, which is fantastic. But what happens if Karen wants to actually spend that money? What if she wants to use it to go on holiday? Well, to get money out of your company, you'll need to either pay yourself a salary or more commonly take dividends. And here's the catch. There's tax to pay on these dividends. After a small tax-free allowance, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, which again, most property investors are, you'll pay 33.75% tax on every pound you take out of the company. And that can change everything. Because if you want to actually spend your rental income to supplement your lifestyle or pay your bills, you might end up losing all those advantages by the time you factored in the tax on dividends. And that is the big lesson lesson to take away here. When a company makes money, it's not the same as you making money. And there's one more small drawback to consider. Unlike individual investors, companies don't get a capital gains tax allowance when they sell a property. This means that when a company sells, it pays tax on every penny of profit it made. Although, to be fair, with the individual allowance now at just £3,000, this isn't as big a factor as it used to be. So I showed you the pros and cons of both options, but let's take a look at a concrete example to see how the numbers start stack up side by side. And then I'll teach you a quick trick that might help you to come to a decision. By the way, if you want to actually run these numbers yourself, you can download our free deal calculator in the description. So let's say you're buying a property for £200,000 with a £50,000 deposit and a £150,000 mortgage. After stamp duty and other costs, you'll have spent about £13,000 on fees. So then let's say you rent it out for £1,200 a month, bringing in £14,400 per year. Your mortgage interest rate is 5%. So that's costing you £7,500 a year. And you've got other running costs like repairs coming to £2,880. Now, let's say you've got a good job earning £60,000 a year, which is pretty typical for many investors we work with. So after all your costs, this property puts £4,020 in the bank. Now, if you own this property through a company, you'll pay corporation tax of £764 on that profit. This leaves your company with £3,256 in its account. But if you own it personally, well, because you can't deduct that mortgage interest and because you're a higher rate taxpayer from your salary, you'll pay income tax of £3,108. This leaves you with just £912 in your pocket from your property. That's a difference of £2,344, nearly three times as much money in the company versus in your personal name. Now remember, if you need to take that money out of the company, you'll pay more tax. But if you're reinvesting it to grow your portfolio, well, that's £2,344 extra working for you each year. But as I mentioned, not every investor is the same. So how can you work out the best decision for you? Well, after working with hundreds of investors, we've developed a simple rule of thumb that can help to guide your decision. And it's to ask yourself a question. Do you need the rental income now or not? If you do need or want the rental income now, it might make more sense to buy personally. Yes, you'll pay more tax on your rental income, but at least you're not getting hit twice, once with corporation tax and then again with a dividend tax when you take the money out. It'll keep things easy and give you instant access to the money. However, if you're investing for the long term and you're not planning to use the rental income to live off, company can often work out better because instead of taking money out of the company and paying dividend tax, you can keep reinvesting your profits and eventually build a property business that grows itself. And the costs of running a company stay pretty much the same whether you have one property or four. So as you're 
your portfolio grows, those extra accounting costs become less significant. And you could even structure things so when you eventually retire, you then start taking money out of the company when you might be in a lower tax bracket because you're not working anymore. However, there are loads of little details that could change what's right for you. So you do need to talk to an accountant. But to get some more help, you can use our free property deal calculator where the link is in the description and check out this video next where I walk you through exactly how it works and how to run the figures nice and fast.